Welcome to a new vlog. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might know that I'm a fan of the Gopher power supply units. They're quite compact, they're easy to use and they have good specs. In fact, I reviewed their latest version in Vollog 255 and I discovered it had very low noise at the output even though this is a switch mode power supply. And just look at this, how little space this will take on your bench. It has good specs, it's relatively inexpensive, so what's there not to like about these power supplies? But in recent years, there's been another company which has slowly built up a name among hobbyists due to their really low priced power supply modules. The name of the company is Redank and they've been selling these compact switch mode power supply modules for $20 to $30 for a few years. They were not great specs, the quality was not great, you needed an external power supply unit, but they had a bunch of functionality built into that color TFT display and they were cheap so everyone could afford one. Now Redang has developed and released a new model which resembles a real bench power supply. It has a bigger front panel and it comes with a separate enclosure and power supply unit which are optional. I ordered one of these models because I wanted to see if they improved on the build quality or the specs of the power supply itself. In the end I would like to see how this compares to a gopher power supply and if it's a better buy or not. I ordered just the power supply section which is all built into the front panel. I didn't get the full metal enclosure or the power supply unit that they recommend because I don't know if I will keep this on my bench, it really depends on the results of this review and I can always order those later and build my complete bench power supply. So this is how the power supply is delivered. I specifically ordered the Wi-Fi enabled version which basically gets you an ESP8266 module for an extra $5 and you know what else you can get for the low price of $2? A set of 10 printed circuit boards with 24 hours turnaround time from JLC PCB. You can even choose the solder mask color with no extra cost. That is the best offer on the market so check out their website link below. This will allow you to connect to your smartphone wirelessly and possibly to a computer, but we'll see that later. The power supply is uh, 60 volts, 6 amps capable, but this of course depends on what you supply at the input, because this is only a buck regulator topology. If you get the full rated power supply that they recommend for the input, then you are getting the full range at the output. But you also have the possibility of connecting, let's say, a 30 volts power supply or a 20 volts power supply at the input, so you will be limited to whichever power supply you choose as the input. And uh, you will always get less than what you put in because of the uh, margin that the buck regulator will require. Inside the box we also get a uh, thermistor which uh, could be used for monitoring the battery charging function. Uh, we get a replacement 10 amp fuse and a couple of uh, spade connectors which I assume uh, fit the input terminals. In terms of build quality it's not great but it's not terrible either. The plastics are acceptable quality, uh, no uh, obvious defects, the buttons are all soft rubber but they're not as soft as you would get on a good quality instrument. The rotary encoder has some nice detents, the 4mm output sockets look decent enough but don't be tricked by the green socket in the middle that is not earth but actually a battery charging output as indicated by the small seal screen logo with a battery. And the thermistor I showed earlier is probably used for battery temperature monitoring while using the battery charging function of the power supply. In terms of connectivity you have USB or optional Wi-Fi or RS-485 with additional modules. There is only one port for these uh, modules so you can either have a Wi-Fi module or an RS-485 module installed. They are using a micro USB connector for PC connectivity and this is likely not an isolated interface. The fact that they have a micro USB poses a risk because these connectors are kind of sensitive they don't take much force to break and so they should be avoided in general on test equipment. Because they place the connector on the front panel, it also means there's a higher possibility for you to hit it while operating the front panel or the output jacks or simply just by having the power supply on the bench there's a high 
chance you will uh, be hitting that USB connector. For years, test gear manufacturers have been using USB type B on their instruments and typically on the back uh, just to avoid those problems. And recently, uh, good manufacturers have switched to USB type C, which is a more robust connector than micro USB. You will need to supply your own clock backup battery. It's a CR1220 and it's not included, so you should order one in advance because you wouldn't normally be having these around. We have a two board construction and I must say the assembly quality is superb. We have good solder joints and almost no flux residue. This means the boards have definitely been cleaned after soldering. We just have a bit of residue on the 4mm banana jacks which have been soldered last but really it's barely visible. This upper board seems to be holding all the power electronics. We have a small heat sink with a fan, a uh, big inductor, a uh, big resistor in here. Uh, the capacitors are branded ECD. I haven't seen this brand of capacitors before, but it's uh, for sure a low cost brand. And all the hot air escaping uh, the heatsink is blowing right into these capacitors, which will likely cause them to age prematurely. But on the plus side, they are rated for 105 degrees C. We also have a relay in here, so the output uh, might be switched through a relay. That's a nice feature. And we have one, two 10 amps uh, mini fuses, but we only got one replacement in the box. On the bottom board, we have the brains of this power supply, which is the well-known STM32F103. So next I will take a look at the functionality of this power supply, then I will test its accuracy, output noise and a few other things. And finally, I will test the PC software and connectivity. I'm gonna power it from a rectified AC transformer. I don't know the exact ratings of this uh, transformer, but it can put out 60 volts uh, after rectification and it has a secondary winding of uh, 1.3 millimeters thick copper. So I think it should be capable of, of providing up to five amps for short periods of time. And now for the moment of truth, let's connect the uh, power supply. This multimeter is measuring the output of the uh, rectified DC voltage on this uh, transformer. We have about 62 volts and the power supply is alive. The first thing I want to check is the standby power because this uh, power button is just a soft switch. So I have my Fluke 87 measuring current at the input of the uh, front panel. It is pulling about uh, 18 milliamps. Uh, when it's like this with the output off, let's check with the output on. It's about the uh, the same consumption. And let's check the standby current. It drops to about 12 milliamps at 62 volts input voltage. When installed in the uh, original enclosure, you do get a mains switch on the back of the unit so you could uh, turn it off completely if you wanted to do that. To give this power supply a fair review I first checked if there are any firmware updates available since this is a relatively new product there might be some tweaks and bug fixes in a new update. Mine was running version 1.25 out of the box and upon connecting to the computer and running their software, which by the way, I will link in the description below, it found a new version available, version 1.28. Next, I jumped into the settings menu and set the current date and time because it now has a battery installed. It should maintain those even when powered off. I turned off the buzzer because it's pretty annoying beeping with every key press. I also configured a few other things like how the output behaves on power on, how the memory recall behaves and if I want a startup logo or not. All of this is available in the settings menu. And now I was ready to test some of the functions. The LCD is crisp and bright enough even in my lab with bright lights it feels like it has plenty of brightness. The surface is glossy so you might get some reflections but it has great viewing angles. 
Although I never like the color scheme Ruideng uses on their products, the text is well readable and you get all the information you need in a single glance. There is also an alternate display mode which you can call from within the settings menu. It's a graph type display where voltage and current are plotted on this graph. This could be useful in some cases but I would mostly be using this in the standard numerical display mode. The buttons down here as well as the on-off button are slightly translucent because they have LED backlight which turns on when activated. It's just a green LED and while that's okay I would have preferred it to also have a red LED to indicate for example when an over voltage or over current conditions occurs on the current and respectively voltage set buttons. But maybe I'm asking too much in terms of GUI design here. They do show on the LCD when the operating mode changes from constant voltage to constant current, so that's an indication the current limit has been reached, but still this could easily be improved with an additional two red LEDs under those buttons. Most of the buttons have secondary functions which are accessed using the shift button as you would expect. For example, there are 10 memory slots which can be programmed with custom voltage, current, overcurrent and overvoltage protection settings and they can be recalled using a combination of the shift key plus the corresponding number. Position 0 is uh, reserved and is by default automatically loaded when the power supply starts. Calling a memory slot will cause the output to switch to the off state. Uh, I think that's configurable through, uh, through the settings menu and I guess that's a good thing because it gives you a chance to check your settings before releasing those electrons into your device under test. You also have the option of locking the keypad to prevent accidental changes to your settings. As far as the menu system is concerned, it's mostly intuitive to use, but there are a few quirks which could be improved. For example, pressing the rotary encoder will act as an escape key most of the time, while to me it would be more intuitive to just use the click as an OK confirmation button and a forward or reverse rotation as a move one step through the menu option or adjust one step. You can set voltage and current by pressing the require set button and then you can enter values using the keypad. You can enter for example 3 and press enter, that will set it to 3 volts or you can enter 3.3, enter and that will set it to 3.3 volts as you would expect. You can also use the rotary encoder but the cursor will always start at the least significant digit, it doesn't remember its last position. An overcurrent event will cause the power supply to switch from constant voltage to constant current, while an overvoltage event will turn the output off for protection. So that is once again expected behavior.